From serial killers Jeffrey Dahmer to Ed Gein, Wisconsin has seen its fair share of gruesome crimes. But in February of 2022, another case that could be considered on the same level of depravity happened in the Badger State. Tara Pakenick saw a light on in the basement of her home and went downstairs to investigate. What she found would be a mother's worst nightmare and would send shockwaves through the community. This is Monsters. Taylor Denise Coronado, known by her married name Taylor Shabusiness, was born on November 11, 1997, in Green Bay, Wisconsin. She spent her formative years in the heart of Green Bay and attended Preble High School. Her life took a pivotal turn in 2017 when, at the age of 21, she tied the knot with Warren Shabusiness in a modest courthouse affair. Despite their share of challenges, the pair welcomed a son in 2021. At the time, Warren was incarcerated on unrelated charges. Taylor's professional life included employment as a cashier at Walmart, and her personal interests, as evidenced by her Facebook profile, included a love for music, an interest in horror movies, and reading. A disturbing aspect of her profile was her apparent fascination for the infamous serial killer Jeffrey Dahmer, known for his gruesome crimes in Wisconsin and Ohio. Behind this seemingly ordinary life, Taylor carried a heavy burden of mental health issues and substance abuse. She began receiving treatment for bipolar disorder as early as 7th grade, and her struggles with substance abuse, particularly methamphetamine, haunted her since the tender age of 15. The harrowing murder, however, revolves around Taylor's connection with Shad Therion, a 25-year-old man who lived with his mother Tara Pakenick in Green Bay. Shad was a landscaper with a passion for fishing and hunting, but he did have a criminal record for disorderly conduct and resisting arrest from 2021. Taylor and Shad's paths crossed through a mutual friend in February of 2022. It remains unclear the exact nature of Taylor and Shad's relationship at the time of the murder, with sources offering varying accounts ranging from lovers to friends with benefits. Nevertheless, the consequences of their meeting were nothing short of horrifying. At approximately 9.30 p.m. on February 21, 2022, Shad was picked up from his mother's residence by Taylor. Accompanied by a mutual friend, they made their way to an apartment on Eastman Avenue where they smoked pot and hung out. During the course of the evening, Taylor admitted in her subsequent questioning that she and Shad also partook in methamphetamine and administered trazodone via injection after their friend had left. Following that, the couple returned to Shad's mother's house, which was vacant at the time as Tara and her boyfriend Steve Hendricks were away. After arriving at the house, the pair went down into the basement to engage in sexual intercourse. Taylor would later claim that the two had regularly engaged in sexual foreplay that involved erotic asphyxiation. In this particular instance, they were using chains. Taylor, who was on top of Shad at the time, proceeded to strangle him with the chain. She could feel his heartbeat as she cut his oxygen off, and even as he began coughing up blood, she kept pulling and choking him harder. That horrifying act persisted until Shad was dead. It took around three to five minutes. As if that wasn't horrifying enough, Taylor only delved even further into the depths of depravity. She went on to sexually assault his corpse for several hours afterwards, using sex toys and performing oral sex. The next morning, Taylor meticulously dismembered Shad's body using knives from inside the home. She used a bread knife, later recalling that it worked best because of the serrated blade. Taylor beheaded him over a bucket and a storage tote to contain all of the blood before dumping the blood down the shower drain. She also removed his organs, including his penis, placing them in bags, a tote, cardboard boxes, and the bucket. On February 23, 2022, two days after the murder, Tara was woken up by the slamming of a door and the sound of a vehicle driving away. When she saw that the basement light was on, she went downstairs to see if her son was there. When she didn't see anyone, she began walking back up the stairs when she noticed a bucket. When she investigated further, she found her son's severed head. It was then that her boyfriend Steve called 911. 
Brown County Public Safety. How may I help you? I'm a side lifting officer at 829 Stony Brook. Um, her friend just woke me up and swears that she found her severed head of her son in a base. Okay, can you repeat the address, sir? Uh, 829 Stony Brook. Okay, tell me what's happening there again. I have no clue what's happening. My girl swears that she's found her severed head of her son in the base. Did you go down there? In a bucket. I went down, I can't tell what the fuck is. I just, part of my language, I'm kind of a little freaked out. Okay, did she just wake up and say that? Yeah. And who is, who, who, whose head is it? She's claiming it's her son. How old is her son? 24, 20, 25. Has he been missing, or? No, he was here. Yesterday with some chick, and then now all of a sudden nobody's here. And she came up to use the restroom a couple times, and she keeps calling and calling. And now she's saying that she hears the phone down there too. Okay, is she with you right now? Yes, I won't. Yeah, she's upstairs. She's a little freaked out, and I don't know what to do. Okay, do you think she's hallucinating, or do you think that? I don't think so. I went down and there's stuff in the damn bucket. <laughs> I mean, I can't, I, I don't know, man, and she a little freaked out and kind of freaking you out. When police arrived at the scene and searched the basement, they found organs stuffed into plastic bags and cardboard boxes. Shad's torso was discovered in the tote with his dismembered foot. Knowing that Taylor had been the last person to be seen with him, police drove to her house to make the arrest where officers immediately noticed the dried blood on her clothes. Shad's legs were found in a crock pot inside Taylor's van. Hey. Um, is this blood? Does this look like blood to you? Or am I just tripping? Bloody footprint? You see this right here? Could possibly be blood. Hmm. Who did that? Hi. Hi, Taylor. How's it going? Officer Russell with the Green Bay Police Department. Just make sure you ain't got nothing on you here. With Taylor. Contact with Taylor. Taylor, you have one more for your, you have one more for your Just put your hands behind your back with when questioned by police about what had happened, Taylor offered a perplexing response, stating, quote, That is a good question. Despite her intoxicated state during the murder, she seemed to recollect much of the events, including the use of the bread knife and the strangulation. She admitted that her initial plan had been to transport all of the dismembered body parts back with her, but her exhaustion ultimately hindered her efforts. In the face of first-degree homicide, mutilating a corpse, and third-degree sexual assault charges, Taylor claimed that she had essentially lost control and blacked out during the horrific process of strangulation. But when she regained consciousness, she found that Shad was already purple and decided to keep going. She told investigators that she had no premeditated plans to kill him, but that she enjoyed choking him so she didn't stop. Taylor made disturbing comments to detectives, asking if they knew what it was like to love something so much that you kill it. On September 1, 2022, Taylor Shibusiness's legal counsel, Quinn Jolly, entered a plea of not guilty by reason of insanity. The trial officially commenced inside the Brown County Courthouse in Green Bay, Wisconsin. A jury composed of nine women and seven men were carefully selected to participate in the case. Of these, four would ultimately be designated as alternatives, thus not participating in deliberations. With the stage set, the prosecutors and defense lawyers delivered their opening statements. The prosecution painted a vivid picture of the crime scene, outlining the events that transpired. In contrast, the defense posited that Taylor was presumed innocent, emphasizing that there are two sides to every story. Uh, sure. On the inaugural day of the trial, the prosecution called forth 11 witnesses. These witnesses included Tara Pakanek, the victim's mother who testified about the horrifying discovery of her son's severed head. Steve Hendricks, Tara's boyfriend, was another witness who played a crucial role, recounting his harrowing 911 call. 
During that phase, the defense lawyers subjected some of the witnesses to cross-examination, aiming to challenge their credibility or memory. They also delved into questions concerning Taylor's mental state and drug use at the time of the alleged crime. On February 14, 2023, the world watched as Taylor launched an attack against her attorney, Quinn Jolly, shortly after he requested a trial date extension to allow experts to assess her competency for the trial. The altercation, which was caught on cameras as they broadcast the trial, led to Taylor being subdued by a Brown County Sheriff's officer with no significant injuries reported. Approximately 10 minutes later, Taylor's attorney informed the judge that he would be filing a motion to withdraw from the case. Seems understandable. On March 3rd, Christopher Froelich assumed the role of her attorney. Froelich expressed concerns that Judge Walsh, who had witnessed the courtroom attack, might be influenced in his rulings and requested recusal, a request that the judge ultimately denied. During the trial, Forensic psychologist Diane Lighton revealed that Taylor had mentioned having a connection with Jeffrey Dahmer a year prior. That statement was intriguing given that Dahmer had been murdered by a fellow inmate in prison in 1994. On July 26, the jury rendered a verdict, finding Taylor Shabiznis guilty of first-degree intentional homicide, mutilation of a corpse, and third-degree sexual assault. Subsequently, on September 26th, Judge Walsh handed down a life sentence without the possibility of parole. He underscored the need to protect the public from her, emphasizing the heinous nature of her crime, stating, quote, This crime offends human decency. It offends human dignity. It offends the human community. Remarkably, Shad Therion's father forgave Taylor, extending a message of understanding and compassion. Taylor is currently serving her sentence at the Tachita Correctional Institution, a facility exclusively for female inmates situated in Fond du Lac. The harrowing case of Taylor Shabiznis is a chilling reminder of the depths to which human behavior can descend. The gruesome events that unfolded in Green Bay, Wisconsin, sent shockwaves through the community and the nation, leaving a trail of horror and disbelief in their wake. It seemed that something inside of Taylor Shabiznis was drawn toward evil and she allowed herself to become a monster. If you're a fan of true crime, hit subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss an episode. You can also hit like or leave us a comment. You can check out our other show, Somewhere Sinister, on YouTube or anywhere that you listen to podcasts. If you'd like to support the show, check out our merchandise at thisismonsters.com. The link is in the description. Thanks again, and be safe.